Hi there, my name is Jason Harlow and uh, today I want to talk about Chapter 1 from Essential University Physics by Richard Wolfson. So this is what I look like. Uh, you won't see my face very often. Normally I'll just be off in the distance narrating, but uh, here's an outline of what we're going to do. So uh, it starts with Section 1.1 on different realms of physics. Section 1.2 is on SI units and their dimensions. Uh, section 1.3 is how to express and manipulate numbers, uh, so scientific notation, significant figures. And then it, we end up on section uh, 1.4, which is a problem solving strategy. And he uses this IDA identify, uh, develop, uh, evaluate, and assess. And there's this uh, slogan the DVD player is a metaphor for all of physics. Uh, I guess he explains there that. The DVD spins, which is like mechanics, and then there's light, and there's sound, and the image, and all these things are governed by physics. Okay, so let's talk about dimensions. So uh, length uh, is a dimension. We call it, we give it the symbol L. The uh, SI unit, or System International Unit for length, is the meter, uh, with symbol lowercase m. And it's defined as the length of the path traveled by light in this fraction of a second, 1 over 299,792,458. So anybody who can measure a beam of light can tell you, uh, can give you a meter stick using this definition. Time is another quantity. The SI unit is second, lowercase s. And the second has been defined as the time required for it looks like about 9 billion periods of the radiation emitted by a particular transition in uh, of cesium atoms, a hyperfine transition. Uh, and then mass is another quantity, we can call it m. Uh, the SI unit there is the kilogram or kg. Uh, and that uh, definition is based on an actual object which is sitting in uh, the International Bureau of Weights and Measures uh, in Paris. And everyone knows that that platinum cyl cylinder is one kilogram, and there are replicas of it around the world. And dimensions are important uh, because um, you can check your equations to have the right dimensions. For example, uh, speed, we know, has uh, dimensions of distance divided by time. So length over t is the dimensions of the quantity speed like miles per hour, kilometers per hour, these all have dimensions distance divided by time. And whenever you add or subtract quantities, they have to have the same dimensions. And also, if there's an equal sign, both sides of the equal sign have to have the same dimensions. So you can check your answer to make sure it has the right dimensions. And it's a good idea to look at units as you go through an equation and make sure they all make sense. So, uh, example. We can look at this equation, v, which is speed, is equal to uh, v0 plus a 1 half at squared. I don't know if that equation is right or not. I saw it written down on maybe somebody else's age sheet or something. And so my question is, uh, does that make sense? So let's check the dimensions. v is speed, which has dimensions of length divided by time. Uh, v0 is initial speed also has dimensions of length over time, so that part is okay. Then you're adding 1 half at squared. 1 half doesn't have dimensions. a is acceleration, which you'll learn later has dimensions length divided by time squared. And t squared, t has dimensions of time, so t squared has dimensions of t squared. When you multiply a times t squared, uh, you'll be multiplying dimensions length over t squared times t squared. t squares cancel and you get length, and that is not uh, not correct. It's not the same as the dimensions of speed that you're trying to add to. So this equation cannot be correct. So next I want to talk about prefixes. Uh, this is a table showing all the standard SI prefixes for powers of 10. Uh, it's kind of crazy long and we don't use yotta or zeta or exa very much. So in this class these are the only prefixes that I'm going to use. Terra means uh, 10 to the power 12, so a trillion. Giga is a billion, 10 to the uh, plus 9. Mega is a million, 10 to the power 6. Kilo is a thousand. Deci is a hundredth and centi, sorry, deci is a tenth and centi is a hundredth. Milli is a thousandth. 
10 to the minus 3. Micro has the Greek letter uh, mu. That's how you pronounce it. It's like a cow. It says mu. Uh, and that's a millionth. And nano with an n is a billionth, so 10 to the minus 9. Those are good ones to kind of memorize or, or, uh, or to at least know where to look up. Let's do an example of converting units. So Wolfson talks about if you have a, a conversion factor, which is given in your appendix or something, one foot equals 0 0.3048 meters, uh, you can use that fact to convert uh, uh, distances. So let's say we've got an object, like the world's tallest structure in Dubai, and you're told that it has a height of 2,717 feet. So, and you're asked, how many meters is that? Well, the way to start is you uh, write down 2717 feet, and then you want to write down a conversion factor, which is equal to one. And you're gonna use one foot equals uh, 0 0.3048 meters. And what you want it to do is to have feet cancel and become meters. So I'm gonna put meters on the top and feet on the bottom and then use this conversion. So I know that since they're equal, you divide them, you get one. So 0 0.3048 meters is equal to one foot. Uh, if I now multiply those two things, then I get uh, equals 828.14. Uh, and then if we want to look at units, uh, the feet cancels feet, and you just have meters left. So the units is meters. And units matter, so this is in the textbook. Uh, on In September of 1999, the Mars Climate Orbiter that everyone was looking forward to, to uh, learning about Mars, uh, blew up. It just uh, burned up in the atmosphere. And it turned out, they investigated it, NASA figured out that the problem was there were two different teams. One was using uh, Imperial units uh, to specify rocket thrust and the other was using metric and when they transferred their data over uh, they didn't convert it correctly and that's why the thing crashed and that was a hundred twenty five million dollar mistake so uh, so it is important for you to be able to convert different to different units okay significant figures so the number of significant figures uh, in a number is the number of reliably known digits that matter so um, for example, 23.21, you count along there, you see it has uh, two is significant, three, two, and one, so that's four significant figures. Uh, 0 0.062, what happens here is that six and two are significant, but these two zeros are what are called placeholders. They tell you the tenth place there that this six is is actually a uh, hundredth. It's not. It's not a six. So the initial zeros don't count as significant figures. If you put 80 kilometers, um, that's kind of ambiguous. It's this zero could be a placeholder. So we would normally say that this has one significant figure. And maybe if you knew that it has three significant figures, you would actually write 80.0, and then this zero is now significant, significant, and significant. Whereas if you just write 80, then only the 8 is significant because the 0 could be a placeholder. The rules for significant figures is if you're multiplying or dividing two numbers, the result, if you're going to express it as your final result, should, have, should be rounded to the same number of significant figures as the number used in the calculation with the fewest significant figure. Okay, so for example, let's do an example. Uh, 11.3 centimeters times 6.8 centimeters. If you do that in your calculator, you'll get, uh, this might be an area, for example, you'll get 76.84 centimeters squared. Uh, but 11.3 has three significant figures and 6.8 has two. So the fewest is, is coming from the 6.8, the sort of the least number of significant figures. So you should round, if this is your final area, you should round it to 77 square centimeters to make it match with the 6.8. If you're adding or subtracting, you use the least accurate number as measured by decimal place. So for example, if you're subtracting 11.3 centimeters minus 6.894 centimeters, 
uh, on your calcula calculator you will get 4.406. Uh, you use the least accurate, so this is specified to the thousandth place. 11.3 uh, is only specified to, to the tenth place. So this is the one that you use. You round to the tenth place. So you round it off to 44.4 centimeters. Calculators, however, are not going to give you the right number of significant figures automatically. They usually give you too many. So example, the top calculator, if you do 2.0 divided th by 3.0, you know the answer should have two significant figures, but your calculator will obviously show 0 0.666666. So if you can express it as your final answer, you should round it to 0 0.67. Sometimes the calculator gives too few. If you do 2.5 times 3.2, it just says 8 on your calculator. But that should be expressed to two significant figures, so it's better to write it as 8.0. Scientific notation is commonly used in physics because it allows the number of significant figures to always be clearly shown. For example, 36,900 Again, we have that ambiguity is, are these two final zeros significant or not? If we write 3.69 times 10 to the 4, that's scientific notation, um, in which you always put one digit, then a point, and then uh, times it by some power. Uh, that, we know, has three significant figures. And if we wanted to write it as four significant figures, we would just write 3.690 times 10 to the 4. This zero is definitely significant because it's not a placeholder. Uh, and so if you're making an approximation, this can affect how many significant figures you should write down. So let's take a pause here and make sure you got it. So 0 0.041 times 10 to the power 9. This is actually not scientific notation because you don't you don't have uh, the 4 over here. But just looking at this number, how many significant figures are there? Take a pause if you'd like, and then I'll tell you the answer. Okay, so that's two significant figures. These two zeros are in front, so they don't count. They're placeholders. Only the 4 and the 1 are significant. And this uh, 10 to the power 9 is just telling you the order of magnitude. Another quick question, sort of redemption. What if it said 10... 0.041 times 10 to the power 9. How many significant figures are there? Take a pause and think about it. Okay, hopefully you got 5. Uh, now, all of a sudden, since this 1 is up here, that means that these two zeros are now re reliably known. They, they become significant. So all 5 of these num figures are significant. Okay, um, estimation. So this is important in physics, is being able to estimate something to an order of magnitude. An order of magnitude means a factor of 10, okay? So if you can get to within a factor of 10, that's a very crude estimate. Um, and diagrams can be really useful here. So let's do an example. Uh, let's uh, say you're, est you're asked to estimate how much water is in this lake. And we know that the lake is about a kilometer across and we kind of guess, maybe from swimming or something in there, or from a, uh, f dropping a fishing line, that the depth is an approximately an average of about 10 meters. So how much water is that? Well, you can draw a diagram. Uh, 10 meters deep, um, 500 meters radius. Okay, you could uh, take the volume of a cylinder. I could even draw a simpler diagram, is that if it's one kilometer across, that's 1,000 meters. And if it's about a square or something, then that's another thousand meters this way. That's the top surface. And then it's 10 meters deep. So I'm going to approximate this instead of being a cylinder, make it a kind of a rectangle like that. And so then the volume is going to be uh, length times width times height. So a thousand times a thousand times 10. And then I get, you can write that as uh, 10 to the power 3 times 10 to the power 3 times 10 to the power 1. 3 plus 3 plus 1 is just 10 to the 7. So it's 10 to the 7, and the units there are meters times meters times meters, which is meters cubed. 10 to the 7 meters cubed is the approximate volume. So that's, a, that's an example of estimation.
Okay, so last section, section 1.4, is a uh, strategy for problem solving. He calls it idea, okay? And it's not meant to be uh, a cookbook or something. You do not have to use this idea strategy when you're solving problems uh, for this course. It's just a suggestion and it's something to help you get going. It's supposed to be a, a helpful little mnemonic. And it stands for Interpret, Develop, Evaluate, Assess, which are the f sort of four good steps to do when you're solving any uh, physics problem where you, where you get a number at the end. So step I is interpret and identify. You have to interpret what is the problem asking, so you have to read it carefully, and then identify what are the applicable concepts and principles. So for example, is it, uh, here are we talking about Newton's laws, is it F equals MA, is this a conservation of energy problem? Uh, you have to identify what are the concepts and what are the players in the situation. So, you know, is it, is it the cart is what the forces are acting on? And so uh, maybe draw the cart. Uh, you know, what are the forces? Is tension involved? Is gravity going to be involved? These are players, I guess. Step D is to draw a diagram, okay, and determine the relevant equations, de develop a plan. So the diagram you draw need not be neat, okay. Uh, I often will just draw something as a, as a dot or something with forces coming off of it. That could be a cart. Um, but it should be labeled. Uh, maybe this might be uh, the normal force and this might be the tension. And I could draw gravity down here so I can label things. And it should indicate objects physical entities, these kinds of things. I might label off the here to the side that's accelerating towards the right, something like that. It's just to help me gather my thoughts. And you want to determine the relevant equations. So you'll have an aid sheet, you can uh, look at summary in the, in the back of the chapter, and figure out the equations that are important. They contain the quantities you're given in the problem, as well as the unknowns you're solving for, and it makes sense with what you're doing. And you want to develop a plan of how you're going to solve this. It might involve calculating intermediate quantities. It might involve looking up certain constants. Uh, you may have to actually solve a preliminary problem and then use the answer in the next step of the problem. So you, you can uh, divide the, the whole problem into different steps. And then step E is to execute your plan and evaluate the final answer. So E is really where all the, the work happens, right? But it's, it's important to have uh, drawn a diagram and, and gotten your ideas first. So uh, you execute the plan you went through. You're going to use math here uh, to solve these equations. And I would say it's a good idea to, before you plug in the numbers, try to solve it all out symbolically just using the letters and then at the end plug in the numbers and look at the numerical answer if if you're asked for one some some physics problems just ask you uh, s for symbolic answers and then step a the last st step is to assess your answer look at it does it make sense uh, is it what you might have guessed in the first place if you know the height of the Dubai Tower came out to be three million kilometers that that would probably be uh, not what you not what you expect uh, the units, do they match up with the dimensions? Um, sometimes you can look at special cases. So if you turn off gravity or if you think of the colliding an object that might have zero mass or, or infinite mass, if you're looking at your symbolic answer, does it make sense in certain special cases? If for some reason you think your answer doesn't make sense, it's possible you made a mistake earlier and you can go back and correct it. So that's it for chapter one, and I will see you in class.